Welcome to Balanced Life with Debbie Carlin Boyle, conversations connecting to a healthier you, the show that gives you all the latest and greatest health and wellness information to inspire you to live a life of balance and joy. Debbie Carlin Boyle is a health and nutrition coach, personal trainer, and fitness instructor who helps her clients live in balance with everything that feeds us in addition to the food on our plate. Please welcome your host, Debbie Carlin Boyle. Hi, welcome, welcome again to another edition of Balanced Life with Debbie Carlin Boyle. Uh, we are conversations connecting to a healthier you. And this show is an interactive show and we would love to hear from you. So for the last couple of weeks, I've been getting, giving out different numbers because our number has changed here in the last couple of months and people have been trying to get through and couldn't. So I'm gonna give you the real number now so you can call in. We have a very delectable, to say the least, subject that we're talking about today. So the number here is 323-843-2826. So call in if you have a question you wanna make a comment, because this is a really good one today. Or you could go to my Facebook page, which is Fit by Design, and you can ask a question or make a comment there. You can do it during the show, before, uh, or not before, because we're in the middle, of it. we're in the start of it, or after the show. And we're interactive, so we keep the conversation going beyond the show. So, having said that, I welcome you, and today I wanna tell you that I've been saying the same thing for years, that food changes everything. And my guest today, Unique Hammond, is living proof of that. Unique is a Crohn's survivor who put herself into remission naturally with diet and lifestyle changes. Now a holistic nutritionist, certified health coach, AIP specialist, and author of the book, Your Taste Buds Are A-Holes, <laughs> Unique has literally turned her pain into triumph. And to discuss her road to health and what she is doing today to help others who are struggling, will you please help me in welcoming my guest to my show, Unique Hammond. We get applause. We have, we have applause that come out of the walls. That's nice. <laughs> Big round of applause for you. So welcome. I must say, this is not the first time that you've done one of my shows. No. Nope. When Della and I had a show, you were our third guest. And you were writing your book, which has now been out for about a year, I yeah. think. And I am so excited to have you talk about this book and your story. And we're going to, you know, assume that nobody watched the first show that is listening <laughs> right now. And even if they did, you know, things have changed for you in the yeah. last couple of years. It's been over two, two years. I looked it up. It was October of um, 2016. When we did the show? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It was a long time, time ago. Flies. Yeah, right. Wow. So, um, so unique. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about your childhood. I know you grew up in Big Sur, California. So, yes. tell us about your childhood and what your lifestyle was like, and what your diet was like, and when you first started to know something was amiss. I grew up. Um, actually with very conscious parents who raised us on organic food and farm food and really instilled that food was medicine and how important it was. Which is true. Yes, but as a young person when I left home, I was really into Snickers and you know, exploring with booze and all of the things that I was told pretty much not to do. I, right. I did the kid thing and I went in the opposite direction. And did you realize right away, since you were eating so clean for the beginning years, did you realize right away the harm that was doing? Like, did you have those twinges of pain and nausea yet? Not yet, but I just didn't feel well. Mm -hmm. I, the symptoms that you see on, you know, doctor's forms, um, you know, foggy brain and lethargic and not feeling well, those were things that I had never experienced. So And they were creeping in. They were creeping in, yeah. The yeah. longer I went eating, you know, bad food, Junk. fast food, and just kind of not really paying attention to my health, the more I started noticing those kind of symptoms mm -hmm. where those forms started jumping out at me like, oh. Big time, but I still I hadn't connected that it was Yeah, because, you were young. Yeah. You were still young. Yeah. And so, it's hard to make the connection. And 
Everybody else was doing it. Everybody does it and they seem fine. Yeah. So you're like, you look good and you seem fine. And but but then you also realize now, especially that people don't really talk about the stuff that's not going right. That's right. Um, when you ask somebody how they are, they say, oh, great. It, they don't say, oh, I was up all night with a bad stomach. No. Right. Like, yeah. it's, just, it's very it depends on how close they are to you and how right. vocal they are about, you know, really. And people just don't. The automatic response is, oh, I'm fine. I'm fine. But right. we don't really know what's really going not on. Not at all. Yeah. And, yeah. It's true. And and so when did you leave Big Sur? What brought you to Southern California? Uh, and it, it was school. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, that was a big shock to leave the small town of Big Sur mm -hmm. and come to the big city. Uh, my, I think my nervous system just immediately was in shock. And that has something to do with digestion, too, Absolutely. especially if you're eating crap. Yes. <laughs> you know, so if yes. you're stressed and, and nerves. Where'd you go to school? Pali High. Oh, okay. So you yeah. moved to the Palisades. Mm -hmm. oh, moved great. to the Palisades, moved okay. to Pali High. Mm -hmm. um, and that was where my stomach issues started to happen. You know, everybody drank coffee and... Um, so I started drinking coffee and I noticed right away that I shouldn't really be drinking coffee, but it was what we did. The thing, it was yeah. the thing. We all you don't, you want to fit coffee. in. The yeah. whole fitting in thing was so important in high school. Oh, yeah. And still is, yeah. you know. I, I work with kids that are in high school. I work a lot with clients, kids, mm -hmm. you know, that might be going through struggling with diet right now. And we talk about fitting in and how it's okay to fit out. It is, know? but it's the hardest thing to do. to do. Unless you're naturally an outcast, it's hard to to break away from the pack and do your own thing that's once right. you're part of a pack. I think that's one of the hardest things about being good to yourself with diet and lifestyle. Yeah. It's really hard. So you so you noticed this when you were in high school. Yeah. What is it, when did it start rearing its ugly head that it really started debilitating you? At what, at what point in your life? Uh, that was probably in 2010. So a long, so a lot many later, years later after college, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. and um, I started a company and uh, started working all the time and traveling and eating out and just really not paying too much attention other than weight, right? right. Weight was my barometer for health. Uh, work out, make sure my body LA. looks th right. Mm -hmm. I can fit into my jeans. That's what kind of mattered, and I didn't put an emphasis on how I felt in my jeans. It was, how do my jeans fit? Well, that's the emphasis. Yeah. And this, uh, we did a show, I did a show on eating disorders two weeks ago. And there's so much emphasis, especially on the two coasts um, in New York and in LA, especially this being the entertainment capital of the world, on um, being skinny, but right. not being healthy. Right. Skinny doesn't mean healthy, no. and we're actually going to no. talk a lot about that because healthy has very little to do with the external. It's everything to do with the internal, and it's amazing how the healthier you get internally, the healthier externally you become as well, and it becomes a byproduct versus the focus. That's right, but yeah. people don't know that they only deal with oh, I'll be happier if I'm skinny. It right. doesn't matter how I get there. It just matters that I get there. Especially if what it takes to get there tears down your health. That's right. right? And then, as we know now more than ever, the gut is where a lot of your immune system and your, ha your happy hormones are created. Mm -hmm. And so if depending on what you've done to get to that size that you're thinking about, you could have destroyed a lot of other things in the past. That's right. And then you're setting yourself up for all kinds depression. of autoimmune diseases, yeah. depression, Skin cancers, issues. Yeah, all, yeah, all kinds of things. And it's just really hard to get that point across because the immediate satisfaction is, how do I look? It's right. more surface than it right. is internal. And that's why you and I do what we do. Um, I have to say that Unique and I met through a program that we took, which I talked about um, during the introduction, uh, that she is a certified health coach and so am I, and we're both certified through the Integrative Institute of Nutrition, otherwise known as IIN. Right. And I went on to take two additional courses, and Unique went on and became a nutritionist and, and wrote a book and really focused on the inside out, working from the inside out. Yeah. And and that's what we're gonna talk about. So let's go back a little bit to, so you felt in 2010 
this is debilitating. At that point, you were married with children. Yes, young children. Um, and it was really the wheels were just starting to fall off at that point. Um, I <laughs> That's went, a good analogy. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. And I, <laughs> I mean, it's not funny, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, the wheels were starting to fall off. And um, and I still, I still wasn't looking at it as these are symptoms that are forming a bigger issue. So I was continuing to live my life, but I was adding in, you know, different healing modalities. I saw a nutritionist. I saw um, Chinese medicine. I went, sought out my friend who's a Chinese medicine doctor. And because I started to lose weight unintentionally because of my stomach issues. And that was a big thing for me where suddenly it was an uncontrolled weight loss before it was like oh I work out mm -hmm. I was trail running sort of a healthy weight loss is what yeah, you thought yeah and muscle and suddenly my body was beginning to eat itself and mm. eat away at my muscle and um yeah that was really the beginning and then I kind of had a moment where the things I was doing worked for a little while and mm -hmm. then I went back to my normal lifestyle and then just absolutely took a nosedive and, and so but yeah. did you make the relationship between what you were doing with your lifestyle and how you felt I was Whether starting it was to put bad? it together yes, you I were. was starting to okay. put it together that wait a minute um I'm now exposing myself to all of these foods that are possibly filled with lots of toxic elements mm -hmm. and um, I'm not paying attention to the quality I'm not paying I'm paying attention to the quantity but not the quality right right so which um, is the what opposite. we do to lose weight right. it's again not the healthy way no yep. no the opposite is pay attention to quality mm -hmm. and the quantity isn't as important because if you're eating for health then you're eating all of the right you're foods clean. Mm -hmm. and you can eat a lot more of those actually so that's, that's true and it and, and I think intuitive people know that but we which is what brought you to the name of your book but we go yes. for what our eyes and our taste buds want and we don't think about what's going on after when right. the digestive process takes a lot longer than it does to taste that food and yeah. chew it and get it down that's yeah. just we see it we start you know digesting right when we look at something that that appeals to yeah. us and people we eat for pleasure I think mm -hmm. most of us eat for pleasure unless we're really um, highly educated about food as medicine mm -hmm. or really motivated to lose weight and then we can do just about anything especially as a woman it's like yeah. i have a goal and i'm going to reach it right um so i'm going to eat the carrot <laughs> you yeah. know versus the, actually that carrot is really good for you so have a lot of carrots yeah you know eat a and lot juice some do you know make sauces whatever do the floats things. Your boat, yeah right? exactly but, um yeah, the your taste buds are a-holes was my nod of the hat of the life that I'd always lived, which was, does it taste good? Yeah, and that's what, how everybody lives. That's why I love the title of the book. So now <laughs> it's a little you, aggressive. It, it is aggressive, yeah. but you know what? People pay attention. It's a wake up, yeah. I think. Um, and we're going to talk about the book and where people can get it because it's a great guide to understanding food and what it can, how it can help yeah. you and how it can hinder you. And so now you're realizing the difference when you put bad food in, bad stuff happens. When you put good food in, things start to get, get better. better. Yeah. So what... Um, what was the breaking point for you when you really, and I know you were going to doctors, you talked about a little bit in the book about um, having not an obsession with doctors, but kind of a thing where you wanted to meet doctors. I think you were really trying to find answers, correct, do you think? Well, it was, I, my obsession with doctors started long before I oh, really? was, oh yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. I okay. was raised holistically, so yeah. I never went to doctors. Oh, so yeah. you were intrigued. Oh, yeah. I couldn't get enough. Okay. If somebody said, that makes sense. Yeah, if somebody said they had a great doctor, and, and we all know that you know, everybody talks about how great their doctor is, oh, yeah. right? So Women's any, locker rooms, I hear it all the time. Absolutely. Yeah. Everybody has an amazing doctor who performs witchcraft. So right. you, you know, I You want like, a piece of that. Yeah. yeah. I'd be like, oh, I want to go meet them. Yeah. And um, so I did. I It was almost, it was an interesting foreshadowing for a journey later to come that um, my respect and love for doctors would land me smack in their office a lot. Yeah. Know? Because now it was... Um, I really felt like I, I was in so much pain. I felt like I was dying. So I was. Now you needed them. I needed. Yeah, I needed them. You needed yeah. answers. I needed answers. How did you finally get your answers? Um, so blood tests weren't really helpful. My C-reactive protein, my, my inflammation markers weren't really showing, even though I was skin and bone. 
my inflammation markers were still not anything to write home about. And so we ultimately had to get the diagnosis of Crohn's. We did a colonoscopy and an endoscopy uh, just for safe measures to make sure there was nothing going on in the stomach. Mm-hmm. Um, and the colonoscopy was where they came back with, yeah, you pretty much have severe Crohn's and um, here is the rest of your life. And once you were diagnosed, it, I think there was a relief to know what it was. But then the protocol that these doctors suggested were things that could probably make it, so maybe it will help the Crohn's, but you're going to go on medication that are going to cause other things down the line. Yeah, it so. And you really resisted that. I did and, a lot of research yeah. and I met with a lot of. Uh, GIs and everybody basically gave me the same protocol which really devastated me because I was like isn't there a doctor out there that knows something else right you know there's got to be somebody there's got to be some gonna, that you're not going to put yeah. a band-aid on this yeah that you're not just going to cover it up Let, or we're take not out going, half your stomach right or a big piece of my small intestine to remove physically remove the inflammation um, the drugs were there to suppress and, you know, and but so not take it away, but not take it away. Mm-hmm. So when I asked them the question, why do I have this? And they couldn't answer, um, other than genetics, which we know genetic only plays a small, small portion yep. of the disease. I, I realized I was really happy the medical system was there. Um, but that, if they couldn't answer my questions, I wasn't going to let them dissect me in a sense. You know, right. I was like, I want to keep everything if I can. And I don't know if I can keep everything yet. And I'm in so much pain that the idea of not just making it go away, the silver bullet, this idea yeah, that the instantaneous what you're going to do can thing. just make this yeah. horrible suffering Stop. go away. But when I did the research and went into the chat rooms, which I don't recommend, I saw the damage potential damage of the protocols right. and and also that there was no guarantee I'd be in remission um, that I might have to try a lot of drugs or that I could be in remission for years and then f- have a no back, real reason flare up, flare up. Mm-hmm. Um, so I took all of that information and decided that it was kind of an interesting coming home really back to my roots because I decided no I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try this with diet and lifestyle mm-hmm. and I'm gonna learn how to manage my stress I'm going to um, say no to things that I shouldn't be doing, and I'm going to take care, care of myself. Mm-hmm. Like so, sleep yes. better and, and oh, self-care. Oh, I wasn't sleeping. Yeah. Well, you weren't sleeping because <laughs> no. you were in so much I was pain. In so and much you, pain. you know, and, and it's reciprocal. It's yeah. just one, it's it this feeds. vicious cycle that feeds yeah. the other. So you, there was somebody gave you a book. So that came later. So I tried a bunch of anti-inflammatory diets. Yes. And um, that had good results for other people, just not for me. And um, I continued to suffer. And the more things I tried, the more weight I lost. Okay. So I was just becoming a little chicken bone, really, um, that didn't sleep. Oh, that's... <laughs> I was a sleepless chicken bone. Yeah. That's um, just so debilitating to everything oh. in your life. And your kids, there's a part in your book where you talk about your daughter noticed she was, you were trying to make scrambled eggs one morning yeah. and you thought, I've got this. I can do this. I need Couldn't. to be... A mother and your daughter was like, "Can I help you, mommy?" And, and something clicked in you that no matter what, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna get through this. Oh, it was just but devastating. The whole thing to was know devastating. know that they could yeah. see it, it even hurts yeah. even more. It yeah. adds fuel to the fire. Well, and that they found me more often than not on the floor just sobbing because I was in so much pain. And you know, I had friends who were like, "Why don't you just let them put you on the." you know, immune suppressants and dual. And I was just like, because there's just something inside of me that says I can't do that. And I don't even think I can tolerate that stuff. I'm so sick. I don't even think I can tolerate it. This went on for like, what, four or five years? Yeah. And yeah. then, and well, then. Well, so it was a solid, um, yeah, it was a solid four years of absolute suffering. But in that fourth year is when I finally got onto the diet that would end up put putting me into remission, um, which was really amazing. Okay, yeah. so what was that book? Tell. So the book that my friend dropped off, and I didn't really see people these days. I, I hid from people. I hid from cameras. I hid from everything. My yeah. suffering, I felt like I don't want to be reminded of my suffering. So I really didn't have a lot of photos taken of me in, in that time, which 
you know, had I thought about it, I would have been like, those yeah. could come in handy. But yeah, you did give us a few that yeah, we're putting up. Yeah, you have a few that I was able to find. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so she dropped off this book that she hadn't read, but she just felt like this book is for you. Like, I know you're on this journey. And um, the book was, they said it was impossible. Mm -hmm. um, and I really, at that point, I was really thinking about pulling the trigger on going the medical route because I felt selfish. I felt my family is watching me suffer. How is this affecting my kids? Right. Um, so it was a bigger picture my, than just yeah, you. Is mm -hmm. my personal Understood. journey yeah. becoming everybody's hell? My personal hell, you know, is, is am I there, sharing yeah, my personal you hell? Debilitating your family yeah. lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah. And so I could you see can, the by right, yeah. yeah. By I right, could, you yeah. would consider that. So I was really sitting at that crossroads of, do Wh I try another diet or do I let go and just realize that I, I failed? I failed to do something that I really thought in my heart of hearts I could do, which mm -hmm. was not an easy thing for me to do. Mm -mm. So this book, she dropped it off. I didn't even go out and get it from her. I, she dropped it off at my door and I hobbled out later. I mean, you have to imagine at this time, I was so sick that I couldn't wear tennis shoes. They were too heavy for my feet. Oh, honey. Yeah. Oh, that's so hard. I literally <laughs> could not. <laughs> no. So, so you were like hunched over trying to crawl yeah. out to get this book. So I did. And it, weirdly, it made me angry and I just threw it at the wall like I don't think I can do another diet you know yeah. I just don't think I can put myself through this and um and then a day went by and I picked it up and I started reading it and one story after another which most of these books have by the way yeah of these Success testimonials stories. of yeah. people who their life has changed and you're like I want to be one I want to be people. them <laughs> yeah, yeah. could yeah. it be that person yeah. and um I started the diet and I booked an appointment and I started doing the work. I started understanding. You booked an appointment with, with who? With the author. With the, the author. Book. So she's yeah. here in L.A. No, no, no. No, she's in Wisconsin. Oh, so you flew to? No, no. Oh, oh, no. oh, From, online. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Um, and started doing the work. And it was excruciating. And I think. Because did it get worse before it got it better? Did. It did. Okay, um, I remember the first, that. The first me. month was really difficult. And. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and then slowly I started seeing improvements, little things like I had pain everywhere. I mean, I had pain in my neck and my shoulders and my back and my legs. There was not a part of my body that I didn't have pain in wow. at that point. So, so I, debilitating. So, so just to give just... you an idea of what progress was for me, it was, oh, oh, that pain is not there. Mm -hmm. Just in my shoulder, that pain. Oh, that's progress. So I call them now little victories with yeah. the people I work with, which is healing is, you know, I got sick at 34. So I had 34 years to damage myself. Mm -hmm. Healing does not happen overnight. Absolutely not. It is not. a slow and steady process. That's right. And I think that's, that's why there's the no hardest quick part. Fixes. There isn't. In, whether you go the medical route or the holistic route, there are no silver bullets. And no. I think that is probably the most devastating truth and once you get over that devastating truth you start doing the work right regardless of what path you go right. on and that's the hardest thing because we were a, a, a country no probably even a world of a quick fi fixes yeah. and that's where the pharmaceutical companies come in and that's where the processed food comes in you know let's satisfy those taste buds let's get rid of the headache let's let's first create the headache then let's get rid of the headache you know it's this vicious cycle but holistically means to heal the whole body, to yeah. work from the whole body. And, body. and that takes time and it's yeah. piece by piece. It's the same way you wouldn't want to go visit a doctor who had two weeks of you know, training. This, it takes years yeah. and years for a doctor to become proficient in order to help you. So it, it makes sense that that's the way the body has to heal because yeah. it does take time for it to go down the rabbit hole. And to re kind of program your immune system, mm -hmm. right? To get rid of the inflammation. To learn how to your, to help your body detox properly. Mm -hmm. And I'm not talking about a juice detox. I'm talking about mm -mm. supporting the liver and the gallbladder in their functions of detoxifying. And um, that's not something that we talk about a lot is no. a lot of the immune system is just right hanging out in that gut. And, you know, having a bad gut it's really yeah. important. Now, I have to say, normally my show is only 25 minutes, and we're, okay. we're, we're only a couple of minutes away from any, but we're going to keep going because okay. I want to talk about the book. And because I think 
what you've gone through and what the book is about is really important for people to hear and understand what we're talking about right now, that that's our command central is our gut. Yes. And if our gut is, if there's dysbiosis, if there's a lot of, you know, uh, cells attacking each other, then we're in trouble because yeah. that's how things manifest and become problems yeah, down the that's line. That's our main source of energy for our entire body. So if you have inflammation in your gut, you're not getting the nutrients your body needs to support a healthy immune system, to a support a healthy mind, to support a healthy body. So it's really, you know, it's by no mistake that it runs down the center of your being because it is everything. Big time. Yeah. And it's just so let's talk about the book. So now you, you've got, you've done the protocol. It took a long time. It took a year and a half to go into total remission. And I just want everybody to hear that because it is not a three month. It's, it can be. Yeah. But it's really, if you set your, it. your goal to, I want to be in remission and that's my goal versus I need to be in remission by tomorrow because I have a job to do. Mm -hmm. It just takes time and dedication and patience and breathing and letting go and letting go and letting go. And being like patient. You can't control it. Yeah. It's, it's and one then, step in front of the, you know. And the quality of life obviously changed for you. And then you sort of thought, I got to help other people understand this. Well, so. I promised actually when I was in my darkest oh, hours okay. and I didn't sleep for, for the five years that I was sick, even going into remission, I didn't sleep. And, and it's stressful when you're not sleeping because you know that sleep is such an important part That's of right. healing. And then so, you make it worse. Yeah. So you're like, <laughs> yeah. I'm not so, sleeping. Yeah. Oh, I'm I not two, healing. Two minutes yeah. last night. Yeah, that makes so, it worse. Yeah, yeah, I think I was getting about two hours of broken oh, sleep a day. And that's your body just deteriorating yeah. just from that alone. And just yeah. in a state of your fight Your cortisol or levels are, are, are heightened yeah. because of it. State which of fight or flight, pain, the, mm -hmm. just constant pain and suffering. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so I didn't sleep for a lot and I still healed. So if you're not sleeping you can still heal it just is you know yeah but you it's yeah a rocky it's, it's a longer it's a road probably yeah. um, so you promised yourself then that I you would that help I, others yeah if i learned if i figured out a way to help myself that i would then turn and help others because it is especially if you're going solely down the holistic path with a lot of people do a mm -hmm. combo mm -hmm. um if you're going down that path it is so lonely because there's not a lot of people on it mm -hmm. there's more people on it now but you know, when I was going through it, I was hard. alone. I was hard. alone going through this path. And what I got most of the time is, why don't you just take the drugs? Yeah. Or why don't you just let them easy way out, quick that? fix. And easy I was just way. like, yeah. well, but that's the thing is, it's not an easy way. I think removing a part of your body and recovering from no, that when you're already sick, not. that is not easy. And and that scared me. No, I'm not gonna lie, it scared uh, me. Well, it, and good that it <laughs> did because it it catapulted you to do this method. Yeah of healing yeah. rather than that. And who knows whether that would have worked anyway. I have no idea. You had no idea. Yeah. And it's a big risk. Yeah. And this also, but you were willing to give it the time and the energy that it needed and it worked for you. Yes, and I was able to even, you know, I would take two steps forward and five steps back. Mm -hmm. And- um, But you didn't but give up. But because I took steps up. forward, mm -hmm. I knew I was headed in the right direction, Good. you know? So it's a little bit um, by it's easy to time. get discouraged when you're taking steps back and you're like, wait, this is already really restrictive and I'm not eating the things I wanna eat and, um, and then I'm taking steps back. You know, it can be debilitating, but because I saw those steps forward, I was like, I just have to chain weeks together. Yes. So I got to the point where I had two weeks where I felt pretty good two weeks out of a month uh -huh. and then as a woman if you ovulate and you have a cycle that's an inflammatory process especially when you're sick so that knocks you so back down so as soon as i got yeah. to that point i was knocked back down on my mm -hmm. ass again and the cycle would begin so you again. had to be tenacious and tenacity yes. is something big to heal this way i would assume. i would like to use the word resilient yeah <laughs> you learn that's a good one. resilience yeah, of course you know i think there's this idea that you're bo you're either born, you're resilient, or you're not. No, this is something I had to learn how to be resilient. I had to learn to go, yeah, I'm back at step one again because my cycle came or whatever. Um, but don't let it take you down. But Just I'm going keep to keep going forward. because mm -hmm. I know what that two weeks of freedom tastes like. Right. That two weeks and I want without that back. pain. Yeah. So if I can figure out a way to get my body to the point where I no longer flare around my cycles, um, then I get it. I get 
I get the goal. You've gotten past that point. Yeah, yeah, you've reached the golden egg. So, so you became, so once you're healed, just in the interest of time, so Mm -hmm. you, um, you made a promise that you would help others. Yeah. So that was you I-I-N. and Rolene and IIN, and that's how we met on mm-hmm. in the, a Facebook group, I think. Yeah. yeah. And after that year, I realized that I needed more. I needed to know more. Yeah. And so I signed up for um, a holistic nutrition course that spanned over two years, mm-hmm. and it was profound for me and wonderful and amazing information. and great group of students that was involved at the time with me. Was it online or you physically yeah. went yeah, in online? Yeah, the school's in Berkeley. Mm-hmm. I live oh, in California, yeah. so, so you had I to did their online there. course. Yeah. Um, but it was amazing. I still listen to the lectures. On my way over here, I was listening to the lectures. That's good. Yeah, because uh, you know what? It's a never-fledging um, thing, food, all and on our bodies. And there's always new things to learn and new stuff going on. Absolutely. And we're never, it's never going to be done and, and said. And it's individual. Yeah. So it's conti- Bio-individuality. Yeah. So Big deal. Um, yeah, absolutely. And I'm a huge, all of the healing modalities out there, I'm a huge fan of because I feel like any, to find something that works for you is the goal. Right. But then it's also committing to that thing that works for you mm-hmm. and doing it. I, the, some of the culture I see today in the health world is people looking for their answers jump too quickly and jump around too quickly, which almost kind of adds to the disease story. There's something That's about really... confusing. Yeah. It there's confuses so much your information. Audience. So the book, I want to get to the book yes. before we have to wrap up. So... The name of the book, the book takes you through what? And it takes you through my entire journey. Okay. It takes you through the steps I took to go into remission. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's really your personal cheerleader on your path. I think we all need one, uh, somebody who's been there, who understands what you're going through. And it's really, I wrote this book as to be your com- an educational companion on your journey. Yes. Yeah. And it, and it's not a book just for people that were either diagnosed with Crohn's, but anybody who knows that they're having gut issues yes. and knows that it's stemming for how, how what they're putting in their body and how they're taking care of themselves. Yes. This book could help them Absolutely. to understand lifestyle and food mm-hmm. can change your life for Everything. the better. Yep. It can make things worse and it can make things better. And really, I, you know, I, I was thinking about this um, today and it's not the first time, but that when you take care of yourself and when you feel good from the inside out, mm-hmm. it not only manifests itself on the outside, but you're also a better human being. Yeah. And I, what I've noticed over the years, being in my 60s now and understanding I've been on that planet a long time, um, people who are angry are really people with bad Mm self-care. These are people that aren't eating right, aren't sleeping, and really taking the way they take care of themselves out on others. Mm -hmm. And it's really setting themselves up for a lower quality of life and a shorter life, which is why I'm writing my book, which is called Age Young, and it's all about longevity with quality. Because without that, we really don't have quality of years. and. I think your book is so important for anybody to understand how to take care of themselves to have a quality of life. Yeah. Tell us really quickly about the the name the, and why you came up with the name. I love this. Oh, well, because I, I was letting, what led me to my disease was allowing my ma- mouth to drag me around. And um, it's really just putting the intention on retraining your taste buds to support your health instead of tear your health down and i think we're such a pleasure driven people we mm-hmm. want pleasure instantaneously and, yeah and mm-hmm. taste is a really great way to get that instant pleasure to retrain your taste buds to like foods that actually support your health is such an important shift in perspective i agree and it doesn't mean that eating is not you can it's, still be passionate yeah. about food and you can still enjoy tastes and flavors. Absolutely. There's yeah. so many herbs and things that are good for you that can make your life just as good as it is when you're eating junk food, yeah. you know? But it's better yeah. because of everything that comes from it. And that's what it's hard to get that point across. Yeah. And, and um, You eat a candy bar, you have that immediate chocolate sugar rush, feel good for a minute. But if you when you retrain your taste buds and eat really good food, you have that feeling all the time. Yeah. 
exactly yeah. and that's the, the reason for the name of the book tell my audience how they can get in touch with you you have a website you have some facebook pages yes. you have instagrams so let's go through all of that my too. Uh, website is yourgreat.com mm -hmm. and my instagram is unique hammond you can find me there and my facebook page is unique hammond health so and you can find me in any of those places. And do you work with people individually, groups, workshops? I do. I mostly work one on one right now mm -hmm. um, with health coaching. Yeah, yeah. with the nutrition and everything. So um, I do that one on one right now. Future, I'll probably have groups to accommodate more people. And um, that's lovely. Yeah. Thank you. And we're going to talk about that. And um, tell uh, what would be final words of wisdom or, or final thoughts to leave my audience with? I would say if you're grappling with the idea of eating organic or the highest quality food, I can tell you firsthand that um, illness is really expensive. And mm -hmm. any way you can get it from the farmer's market, get it from a produce box being delivered to your house, eat the highest quality food, period, because um, you're either going to pay a little extra today or a lot tomorrow for an illness that you did not expect or right. intend. So. And it's not just money we're talking about. You're no. going to pay a big price in other yeah. ways. Yeah, quality so. of life. It, it hits you in the pocket, but it also hits you in the quality of life and joy. So That's right. I would say um, prioritize your health now, not later. And then everything is a trickles and yeah. falls in, in suit. And you actually, by giving your body quality food and um, high density food, you create um, resilience in your body as well. So if you are hit by a major bug or some crazy toxicity, that your body has the resilience to get it out and to help you detox properly without having to do a juice cleanse or anything else. If you eat really good quality food, you're giving your body, you're helping giving your body right. that resilience. Perfect. Thank Love you. it. Thank you for helping so many people. Thank you. Thank you. Don't uh, reach out to Unique if you want to learn more. And I encourage you to get the book. It's on Amazon. It's right? on Amazon. It's called Your Taste Buds Are A-Holes. So <laughs> go look that up on Amazon. I have it's been also... told that people can find it easier by putting in my name, Unique Hammond, for whatever reason. I don't know why. Because it's so unique. Yeah. <laughs> And that's why. And I want to thank you for spending time with us today. I want you to remember to go out and to keep finding ways to connect to a healthier you. Bye, everybody. See you next week. Woo!